Hi everyone, I am so excited as usual for you to meet my guest this week. This is a friend of mine. Her name is Alicia Bush and she is the founder and CEO of Treasured Vessels Foundation, which is an incredible organization in North Texas that acts as a safe house for rescued sex trafficking victims. We talk about all kinds of things in this episode. Alicia shares about her journey from the corporate world into the nonprofit sector. We talk about sex trafficking uh, domestically. She tells about, um, specifically in Dallas, her times on the streets and meeting pimps, meeting um, trafficked women. She shares the, the hard things and the amazing things about doing the work that she does. She also has some interesting stories about working at a porn convention. She shares about her and her husband's journey through it all together as she shifted careers rapidly. And most importantly, she shares about God's goodness and faithfulness that when he calls us, he will help us complete it. So enjoy this very inspiring and very educational episode with my friend, Alicia Bush. Well, I'm happy to have Alicia here. <laughs> oh, this is going to be, this is going to be really good. Um, I'm trying to decide whether I want to talk about what you do or let's go background first. Okay. okay. So you worked in medical sales mm -hmm. and for how long? 14 years. 14 years. Mm -hmm. And you loved it, right? Mm -hmm. Really high up. Yep. What was your title? Territory. I was just territory. senior, senior okay. territory manager, but it, it was just really, I was just really good at it. Yeah. And I was top 10% in the company yep. year over year. It was, I just, you know. A lot of favor. Yes. Loving life. Yep. You're married. Did you mm -hmm. you did you have your kids when you mm -hmm. started? Okay. Yeah. What is 04 is when I started and Olivia was born in 07. Okay. Yep. So you've, you've got kids coming. You're married. Mm -hmm. You're doing really well at this company. They love you. You love it. You're killing it. Mm -hmm. You're making good money. I've been in your closet. I've mm -hmm. seen those red red bottom shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're living the dream. Yeah. To anybody who sees you from the outside, sure. Life probably couldn't get any better. As yeah. we as we easily think that about and people. And we had just moved into that home that y'all had been, the first home that y'all the first home, which was, was for like six months. Beautiful. And I had insurance. I was carried all the health insurance. Oh. The, my W two yeah. was what allowed us because banks would not give money. Still to still to this day it's hard. But to Why? a to a um to a non W two, you know, oh. to a business owner. I mean, you could have cash and oh. banks still the way that especially how they looked at builders. Interesting. With with the market crashing in 08. And so my W two was like the golden ticket. And because it was consistent. Yes. They knew they can trust it no matter what the market did. Yep. Because Brandon, your husband, he builds homes. Yep. And he built that first home, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or the one that I, the first yes. home I came to. Yeah. Yes. Which was beautiful. Thank you. So you've got this beautiful home. You've got three great, healthy kids. You've got a loving husband. You've got a killer job. And then yeah. one day, <laughs> what happens <laughs> where you all of a sudden, like, was it a process of moving into what you do now? Or was yeah. it a moment? Um, More of a moment. Okay. You know, you, it was, I mean, I think it, and, in the back of my mind, it was a process. Uh -huh. Maybe deep down, it was a process. Yeah. But I knew that I kind of have that all in. Like you uh -huh. got to, can't have one foot in and That's one foot out. That's your personality. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yes. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it. Go big or go home. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, dab I'll, I'll dabble all day long. <laughs> That's why we're Just friends. Turn it over here. Turn it over here. <laughs> totally. Okay. okay, so, in but there was a moment where you kind of got awoken to... Yeah, just to, Tell I got to do something that. else. I got to okay. do, Yeah. am I doing what I was created to do? Yeah. It was just a very surreal kind of, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I'm a mother. I'm, yep. you know, you'd think that I was checking all the boxes, yep. but yet there was something still missing and mm -hmm. I didn't had, I had absolutely no clue what that was. So you felt something missing, but you didn't know what it was. Right. So how did you discover sex trafficking? Well... I or resigned. What started that? <laughs> well, I'm like, I resigned from my company, and then I told my husband. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, yeah, this is a great part of the story. In that order. <laughs> I'm sure that went really well. Okay, yeah. wait. So, did you start to get a passion for sex trafficking, or did you resign just when you felt the hole, just, like the missing? Just, 
you know, strategically, I was at the pinnacle of my career. Yep. And if I was going to pull the mommy card <laughs> and say, I want to stay home with it. my kids, this would be the time that's to do so that. Smart. Yep. Um, and so that's when I resigned at with that language being explained to my company. Yes. Um, and the and the leadership. Mm-hmm. So they completely understood. Um, however, we're, you know, devastated, of course, but like that's normal, I guess, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. And then I just I woke I remember waking up on January first, mm-hmm. two thousand what was that, two thousand fifteen. And I was completely stripped of my title, oh. my uh purpose. Yep. And having we to get rebuild. our identities when oh, yeah. we do good at when we're good at things. Yeah. We do form identities around it. Yeah. Yep. And you just go, okay, now who am I? Yeah. What do I do with my day? <laughs> Like, let's just start with that. Like, t- <laughs> I don't have to wake oh, up man. for a reason, yep. you know. Um, yep. At that time, we had a, you know, our nanny was living with us mm-hmm. and she did everything underneath the roof. And so I went, I remember going to the laundry room yeah. to do laundry. And she's like, mm, I'm sorry, what are you doing? So I'm going to, I'm, I am capable of doing the laundry. You're like, no, which thing you push? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and she goes, I'm sorry, get out. Um, this is called job security for oh, me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She's so panicking now. you need to go <laughs> do something else. Oh man. Okay. So you resign, but you're still don't, you haven't narrowed in on what will become the, the passion of your life. None. So you would kind of resign in faith. Oh, absolutely. And you tell Brandon afterwards, how did yep. that go? Oh. Also, we can delete anything. If you like talk freely, oh yeah, we can anything you want edited, we can edit. I edit myself. Oh yeah, all the time. No, you're, you're like Katie would not want me to say that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, how did that go? Um, I the, the insert resentment uh-huh. very much. Yeah, uh, you know when you feel when, as close to you are as we are with our spouses. Yep. Um, but you but it really felt like I was serving two masters. Mm-hmm. He didn't want me to leave out of fear. Yep. And I wanted to leave out of obedience. And oh, it was hard. a st- complete struggle because he knew he was wrong. Uh-huh. Um, but at the same time, it still was scary. Sure. And so. Yeah. And now he's now insert resentment. And so that took that was a good, mm-hmm. good bit of time just trying to yep. work through that in your marriage when you're going Hey, I'm I'm searching for my purpose and and yep. the Lord and you know and I'm deepening my faith and all these things and he's over there going I am treading water oh, yeah. now having to restructure my entire company to support our family financially yep. and our employees. Yep. Uh, and it, 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 and it felt so, a little hung out to dry. Yeah, yeah, very much. And I'm over here going, but babe, this is amazing, you know? <laughs> yeah, look at what I'm learning. Yes. Look at my growth. Look yes. At, yeah. I think that has to happen to almost any couple. Yeah. It, it, it's somewhere through time. Yeah. Where one person, you know, it's just that, it's just, there's an ebb and flow to that. And you were in the flow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he was ebbing. <laughs> yes, very much. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so t- correct me if I have the story wrong, because you told it to me a long time ago. But is he the one that came home and told you about something he had heard? Yeah, he about went to girls a men's, in Dallas. Well, he had been to a men's breakfast. Okay. A couple of years before oh, okay. all of this. Okay. And brought home the brochure, and he learned about human trafficking yep. from another local organization yep. overseas. And the issue over there, then domestic trafficking, and then yep. Dallas. And so I actually still have that brochure oh. from that organization. Oh. And so that was kind of that uh, tug on tugged on our heart from the missionary yes. standpoint, you know. And you kind of go, "Well, this is where I live. I don't really understand what that is." But you just told me that there's an orphanage in Ru- Russia <laughs> that has a high incidence of trafficking Mm. maybe we'll adopt Mm -hmm. from an orphanage that they you know Mm -hmm. that they're being they're going to be sold for trafficking so we started actually that process oh did you Mm -hmm. oh i didn't know that Mm -hmm. and then surprise boston oh surprise (laughs) boston (laughs) well (laughs) came crashing into the world table that (laughs) okay Um, so wow so you were just even hearing about human trafficking you were just thinking like oh we'll just take a child or we'll do yeah so because we had wanted to adopt. Sure. Yeah. But um so but that cool. was like, oh, well that's kind of a yeah. a different spin on it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But never uh a, a, never a big vision, never a uh eradicate 
something here or right, never, right. you know, yeah. only, only thing we were been philanthropic and there's a church and yep. overseas missions. Yeah. You know, I didn't grow up that way. Mm-hmm. I didn't have, was never going to the soup kitchens or mm-hmm. homeless shelters. I mean, mm-hmm. that, especially in my did small you grow town. Did you Christian? Mm-hmm. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, okay. Church of Christ. Oh, okay. Yeah. Frozen <laughs> Chosen. <laughs> and my husband, Assembly of God and Pentecostal. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. great. Yes, I found oh, my inner Pentecostal. How God, how God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, wow, we had no music in the church. Wow. Brandy goes, well, that's why you can sing harmony really well, Alicia. Oh, my <laughs> It's like, like you have to sit wow. in your section. You know? oh. <laughs> now, an interesting— And then Brandon takes you to yes. this assembly somewhere, and you're like, what, what is, is happening? going on? Like, okay, so you get this kind of idea of maybe we'll adopt. This is a really horrible thing that's happening. Yeah. Um, then th- it was a couple years before you resigned. Yeah. So you resign— you're learning all these things. What moved you into treasure vessels? So it was about in uh, April. Okay. I started doing that Circle Maker book. Mark yes. Battis- oh, Battistini. Yeah. My, Mark Batterson. Batterson. Yeah. Yes. Um, oh, it's so good. And I just really started to posture myself with a complete surrender mm. and a yes in my heart. So... At one point, the Lord said, you will speak about me on a platform. Mm -hmm. I said, "Mm -hmm. no, Mm -hmm. I do not public speak. Mm -hmm. Um, It was almost like I was like this little stubborn child. Mm -hmm. And that took about a couple of weeks to kind of wrestle with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't don't even know what that means. And so I remember going to my prayer closet and I stood up and I took a step forward and I raised my right hand. Why I raised my right mm-hmm. hand, I have no idea, <laughs> as opposed to my left or my or my leg. Right. I mean, you know, like, right. but I just said, Lord, there's a yes in my heart mm. for whatever it is you're calling me to. Wow. And in May, I had went to a women's conference mm-hmm. and Lisa Bevere was there. Oh, yeah. And she, before she got up on the platform, she walked straight up to me, stuck her hand on my abdomen, and she said, the same calling that is on my life is on your life. Wow. I'm like. Does this is this where I lay down now? <laughs> Am I going to need one of those right. what, courtesy right, blankets right, or whatever right, they call right. it? It was know? like very moving. Yeah, yeah. Just because it was like a confirmation of that what you have been sensing. Yes. Um, wow. So, man, never, still not human trafficking. Still yep. no light bulb. Um, God is dealing with you. Yeah. Just yeah. In, in that. This is how he are does you, it. Yep. Because are <laughs> yeah. you going to be ready when I yep. tell you? Mm-hmm. Um, because what I'm going to tell you is. Is is going to be so from me mm-hmm. that you'll know that it was me, mm-hmm. and that it wasn't anything of your flesh. And yep. So, I um, had Bianca Alsoff. Oh yes, at yes. my house to lead a women's yeah m- meeting. One hundred and seventy five yeah. women showed up in the pouring rain, wow. and um, we called it Favor. Mm-hmm. It had an acronym. So you started a Bible study. I started a yeah. Bible study, but I started it, I, it was like Acts 2, mm-hmm. and I was really intentional about having people in my home that were mad at God mm-hmm. or did not know the Lord. I did not mm-hmm. want this to be your typical women's yeah, conference. Yeah, yeah. You I want, were looking for the outskirt. Yep. yep. Like they may not come to church, Yeah, but they'll come into the four walls of my right, house. Right, right. So oh, cool. um, she came in, and it was pouring down rain. And like mm-hmm. I said, 175 women mm-hmm. showed up. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, she spoke on Ezekiel oh. and dry bones. And oh. it was such a good um, time. And so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm building this up and I'm going, oh, honey, I can do this. Look at, you know, like yeah. we can have speakers come in. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and at this time, like right after that, I had also worked at the porn convention that we had here with Triple X oh, Church. The Triple X Church. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, always kind of leaning towards mm-hmm. the taboo the talk know, about the porn convention for yeah. a <laughs> that was um you know we Triple didn't Church, for people who don't know is a you probably could an online resource an online resource yeah just for for, for porn addiction mm-hmm. how to talk to your kids about sex yep. um and it, it kind of an olive branch is mm-hmm. if you will it's kind of like people that open up um like a a liquor store right you know they're not like saying oh we hope we make a 
we hope a bunch of alcoholics. Right. We hope uh, we continue to enable like yes. people in a downward spiral. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of how the um, the pastor Triple X Church mm-hmm. sold the idea yeah. to be able to come into these conferences. Yeah. So they it, show up at por- yes. correct me if I'm wrong porn yes. conventions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we have and them. not with like signs and screaming like they show no, up as there's like those people, genuine we are resources. Not. <laughs> yeah. You yes. are not those. Let's just make that distinction. <laughs> yes. We do not scream and hold mm-hmm. signs. Uh, <laughs> we pay to be there. I mean, yeah. We, it's a huge booth. Um, It's black with hot pink writing that says Jesus loves porn stars. <laughs> oh. And it's a guy's <laughs> like silhouette of uh-huh. his face that has you look like you think he would be like a porn star, mm-hmm. what it looks like in the 70s. Yeah. But he's got the beard and the mm-hmm. glasses, the aviator shades. Uh-huh. And the goal was to um, have just share with people. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a free t shirt. Here's some resources. And yeah. um, we were not to talk about theology. We yeah. were not to talk about. Um, what we, ha- you know, to get into an argument yes, or discussion, yeah. we're just, hi, just on people. have you ever been here before? What's yep. your name? Where are you from? Yeah. Just truly uh-huh. um, loving on people. But at the same time, behind the scenes, we were buying lunch for mm-hmm. the girls that were um, actively working that day. Yeah. And bringing water bottles and snack bars. Mm-hmm. So they weren't able to leave their booth. And we were literally between the um, sex toys and the porn stars. <laughs> we had the largest the perfect group. place. To yes, be I'm right like, there. Wow, oh. you know, learn all. I mean, you're just going. Right, wow, where, those are really interesting toys over there. Right where the so, toys should be. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> it's awesome. and but I, it was, it was when Fifty Shades of Grey uh-huh. had just come out, and um, it was, you're in it and you're smiling uh-huh. and you f- you feel like you're making good progress you know they were having an orgasm contest right behind me oh my goodness on stage while i'm talking to these two young boys and i'm like i don't really know what to do with my face right now um oh man this is next level yeah and then it you i don't know that we ever i never knew how hard it was or Mm -hmm. how dark it was until i left and i was just i just sobbed all the way home like what did we just do like what did it was so heavy, but when you're in it, you know, like when you do yeah, missions yeah, overseas, yeah. Oh, like you sure. don't, yeah, yeah, you pull it together, and yeah, it's going, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a grace on it, mm-hmm. and then you go home, and then you just, and we would text each other the next day, all yeah. of us in the group, like photos of people with clothes on, mm-hmm. and photos of puppy dogs. <laughs> Because we were just like, I, like you were really, oh man, felt like, you needed a purge almost. Like, yeah. yeah. You just need puppies. Yes. Yeah. Puppies and clothes. Clothes. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so intense. Yeah. Well, so, well, this is interesting though, because you have like the little thing happen with the, um, the brochure and mm-hmm. then you're starting the bible st- god's doing a lot in you you're starting this bible study for the least of the you know for the for least those? you're 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 focusing mm-hmm. on the least mm-hmm. and then you become a regular porn convention goer mm-hmm. yeah. that will not be a sound bite yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny when I would say, "Hey, sorry, we can't meet mm-hmm. um, this next week because I'm going. To, I'm working at the porn convention," <laughs> and I would just sit it there, and Brandon would be like, "Only oh, so, <laughs> tell him like, like please finish get it. some context there." <laughs> I'm like, "No, I just like to sit in it." You totally do like to sit in it. I love that about you. <laughs> Just make people squirm. Okay, so clearly God's doing something. In hindsight, you can see it. Okay, so what what happened after that? (laughs) So, you know, I I just, I went to Brandon. It was Mm -hmm. November. So that was in August. Mm -hmm. And November, uh, it was November 6th. On a Friday night, I'm just uh-huh. sitting outside and I'm going through all these ideas of the things. Oh, yeah. we could do Acts 2 Church and we could, you know, but they were all um, uh, kind of, a, I don't know what, what you would call it, but they weren't tangible mm-hmm. things like to, to build something to. And so he that's when I don't know whether he's a builder, if that's a male yeah. thing yeah. or whether it was a God thing. But he looked at me and he said, Alicia, you could do all of those things. I, I believe that. Oh. But that's not it. Wow. And he said, and he he did this with his fingers. Mm-hmm. He said, what are you going to do with your hands? Mm. And I'm like, and he goes, are you going to build a school or, or dig a well? Yeah. You know, what are you going to do with your yeah. hands? I said, oh, okay, Lord, what am I going to do with right. my hands? And the next morning, November 7th, I sat straight up out of bed and the Lord said, you will build an aftercare facility for girls rescued from sex trafficking. <gasps> Just like that. <laughs> I have goosebumps. 
Oh my God. And I looked at him Just and like I said, that. we will build an aftercare facility for girls rescued from sex trafficking. You're like, don't lose it. Don't lose it. Yeah. <laughs> and he looked at me and he had this like oh, epiphany of, that's it. Oh my God. And that's how it came. So I Did emailed, you even know anything about sex trafficking other than the no, brochure? No. So you that's just, when I, I emailed uh, Bianca Altoff, knowing that yes. she was working yep. with A21 oh at the time. Gosh. And I'm like, uh, is this a thing? Is this a need? Literally, you don't even know if it's a thing or a need. No, because this is no before clue. it became very public. Right. And oh my gosh. Yep. And so she explained to me what A21 does. And she said, oh, you know, we're us- we're overseas. We're looking, are you looking to build a place in Texas? You know, I mean, I'm, mm-hmm. and then I just started asking questions, like Googling, you know, human trafficking and found out this organization. So I called them up and said, hey, what do you do? Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, we have a home. We are closing our home. That mm-hmm. is not our lane. Would you like to take the torch? Oh, wow. And I'm like, we're builders. Right. I don't know anything about a program. Could right. someone come in and, and what? And yes, actually, there's an organization in California. They're wanting to move here. Oh you can build them a facility and they'll lease it for a dollar. Oh, <laughs> they came here. Um, oh, my goodness. I met with the CEO and uh, it just it kind it was of was that quick. It, yeah. So I just started learning law enforcement. Uh, oh, if you want to serve children, you have to have, without their parents, you have to have a license. And this is the like Department of Family and Public Safety, Health and Human Services. Like, you and I know CPS. Yep. They're the ones that give you the license. Okay. okay. H- how does that work? And I, I just became a student a for four years. Of oh just, my gosh. This is, cru- this mm-hmm. is so crucial mm-hmm. to anybody who gets a dream. Because mm-hmm. I think like... So many can just be like, okay, and now we're off. Mm-hmm. And that you can burn out real quick mm-hmm. and you can make some really bad calls. Yeah. With a good dream. Yep. But you took four years mm-hmm. and learned, which takes humility too. Yeah. And I love that. Considering, because, yeah, where yeah. I come from, where, yeah. you know, yeah, and you, now I'm working as a volunteer. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And you still are, aren't you? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> you do have CEO and founder of By Your Name now. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so you just humbled yourself and started getting to work with what is this and how does, how do I help? Yeah. So what'd you learn? What did you come out of it with? Well, I learned that I was trying to raise money for a problem that no one knew we had. Okay. For a solution no one knew we needed. <laughs> yep. So I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. And then in philanthropy, uh-huh. um, it'd be kind of like Joe out in the community that says, I'm going to start a church. Mm -hmm. And then he just buys a building and he tries to start a church, but he doesn't know anyone Mm -hmm. in the, uh, in ministry or he hasn't done a home church of 12 little families. And, you know, there's a way, there's a way to do it. And, and he would just open his doors and say, okay, come on. And that's kind of like in philanthropy. No one knew who I was. Here I am raising a bunch of money uh, or asking for Mm -hmm. this big vision that God had given me and kind of got, um, snubbed sure you know yeah. by people in the community that yeah. said alicia we're in this space and everybody's trying to do what you're trying to do and no one has been able to successfully mm-hmm. do it you know i joined coalitions mm-hmm. within six months i'm at the governor's mm-hmm. um office being asked to join this task force i'm like i haven't even done anything yeah but it was the day that we started the organization uh was six months later i'm in the, i'm in texas capital capital yeah going why am I here? Why am I even <laughs> right. seated here right. Right. with all these organizations that have done something, mm-hmm. that are doing something? Mm-hmm. And, but again, just learning from them. Wow. But um, always kind of feeling like the freshmen uh-huh. with the with the seniors. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. And people are territorial. Very. Good people are territorial. Yeah. And like, you think, <laughs> like you think in, in the this nonprofit sector, right. you would think that we would all collaborate. The more the and better. We're all doing, Let's, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to share all the donors' sure, information. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, because apparently there's only a limited amount of money. Oh, <laughs> no. Did which anybody I learned was come not true. beside you and really mentor and help you, or did you have to just scrap your way through it? Um. Yes and no. Yeah. Okay. I, I, bits and pieces. Uh-huh. You know, law enforcement. Let me let me teach you how this looks on our end. Um, uh huh. Oh, so they helped you. Well, that on them for them, and then the and then the oh, CPS like there was side. different sections yes. of people that you would that would help you along. Yes. Be, okay. Gotcha. And would just 
kind of teach yeah. along the way. I didn't really have that one. Yeah. Um, but it was, the, I guess and it so changed in, in any ways. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, wow. and I met survivors, you know, after nine months we started, I met a survivor and her mom, she was 14. Oh, wow. Um, that was, I don't know that I've ever told you that part of the I story. I don't think so. No, I would love to hear it. The, the first part of the story is years ago, like 2012. Mm -hmm. um, we had a friend named Elizabeth. We went mm -hmm. to church with her. I never had a friend. She had a special needs daughter um, that was 12 months old at the time. I had never had a friend with a yeah, child with special, special needs, needs that was uh -huh. in and out of the hospital, mm -hmm. very sick. Um, and her name was Elise. And she and I just became really good friends mm -hmm. because I wasn't emotionally attached to she and her daughter mm -hmm. like her other friends were yeah i was in med medicine so yeah. going into the hospital and seeing all the tubes and mm -hmm. i would bring her coffee and that. she'd be like oh they'd be doing cpr on her daughter and mm -hmm. she would be like hey good timing thanks for the coffee oh. you know this is that yeah. was just kind yeah. of her life and her routine mm -hmm. and i wasn't afraid of it and i didn't fall apart every time yeah, i saw her which she needed yep. yeah so um that year was the uh well let's see i guess in december she was 14 months old. They mm -hmm. brought her home. The doctor said, you know, there's really nothing more that we can do. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the year that it snowed on I, December yeah. 25th. Yeah. You know, oh, like a white Christmas. Yeah. Um, I and I got the call and she's her, her husband said that she had passed mm. in her mother's arms, you know, perfect oh. kind of way to, to go. Oh, yeah. And um, so, uh, we buried Elise and Elizabeth and I are still um, such good friends. Mm. And um, she's since adopted a, 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 a little girl. Oh. Um, and uh, so just fast forward three years. Um, and Well, and I guess during that time, Brandon had said to me, I, I know what you're to do. And I'm like, I'm literally just got a phone call that our friend's daughter had just yeah, said what do you yeah. mean like do the dishes right. what am i gonna do <laughs> right, right, right. and he had this look on his face mm -hmm. and he said you just start a nonprofit, mm. and i'm going i don't like what is that right it's like a church i don't right but he just he's like oh. i don't i don't know but he, so that was planted then yes but he had seen, he would now will tell you that he would see me like go up to the hospital and was just doing random things yeah. for random people. Um, and he just thought I should really focus my efforts. Mm -hmm. So that was, I'm in the middle of my career, mm -hmm. right? Boston is not born yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going, I, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, right. but okay, noted. Yep. Um, and then fast forward, we start Treasured Vessels. Nine months in, I meet my first survivor and her mother, and we sit down, and she says, hi, my name is Elise. Oh. And I'm like, and then her mother says, and I'm Elizabeth. Oh. I was like, meant to be here. Meant yeah. to be here right now. Like, oh my god. That, those two names, that, I mean. What are the odds? Yeah. So that was just, I feel like God's little confirmation 100%. that I know this is hard. Yeah. I, I know you don't understand. Yeah. I, mm. but just trust me that I, I'm in every detail. I've already, <sighs> I, so it's just those yeah. sweet little moments that he reminds us that when you're going, surely I did not hear right. correctly. Right. It's um, so hard. It's so hard. Out yeah. Here. Yeah. And then he sends you Elizabeth and Ellie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So maybe you pause now. Mm -hmm. Because by this point in the story, you were pretty familiar with what's going on, right? As it, especially in our area. Because you specialize in North Texas. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. um, domestic North Texas. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, can you tell us a little bit? Because I feel like we all, and I, I was telling you this earlier, but I feel like we all, human trafficking, sex trafficking is on the radar. Right. Um, in most people's lives, mm -hmm. right? Um, thanks a lot to Christine Kane and, you know, different things. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know that we all really know, like for a long time, I'm just thinking human trafficking, like they just like put, like kidnap kids and mm -hmm. put them in trucks and take them to other, like, mm -hmm. you, I think everybody has a perception of what mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. So with, cause most people listening to this, not all, but most will be in our area. Most will be in the country. What does it look like? And you specialize in girls too, mostly, right? Or mostly. completely? Right. For now. For now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're always, you've always got another plan coming. Um, there should never be a 
period at the yeah, end. Yeah, no, there should. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, so just talking North Dallas, because Dallas is a high, is high on the list, right, of trafficking mm-hmm. places in the country. Mm-hmm. What number is it? So Houston is number one okay. in the country. And in the country? In the country. Houston is. Mm-hmm. Now, I heard a legislator actually say that Dallas was number two in okay. the country. I haven't. I haven't verified that okay. yet, yeah. but I know that Texas as a whole yeah. ranks number two in the country. It does. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. So can you um, tell us like the process? Of, and I'm sure it's different in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. but um, how does somebody become trafficked? How is a child trafficked? Mm-hmm. And what happens from that point on? So, is it kidnapping? Yeah. Is it bad parents that sell? Is it, you know, what? 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 So, yes, kidnapping is kidnapping. Yep. However, it's kidnapping in the States Mm -hmm. is about 1%. Okay, so it's pretty low. I mean, or some people say even as high as 10%, meaning Mm -hmm. it's very, very very rare. Yep. Um, Most of our kids in the U.S. and youth, they Mm -hmm. go willingly to their trafficker. Okay. They have built, they think of friendship, a boyfriend. Okay. um, Maybe they're offering, and it's always built on hope. For, hope for a better life. They, yeah, yeah. Hope for um, fame and fortune, yeah. or, or even hope for, hey, I won't abuse you like your stepfather's abusing mm-hmm. you, or I won't bully you, or you'll fit in here. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is that they can kind of pinpoint mm-hmm. to get that person to come willingly with them and begin to participate and mm-hmm. exploit yeah. uh, their vulnerabilities so is are, exactly. Are there rings mm-hmm. of this where they, they, target kids yeah and they it, there's like a system behind it yes i mean f- very i mean there can be well organized rings and there can just be a one off like just some guy that's yep. figured out he can do this and, mm-hmm. yeah okay or maybe some mom who has an addiction is trying mm-hmm. to pay rent and she remembered how her mom paid rent when she was growing up and she yeah. turned out fine whatever fine looks like and she ends up selling her child to help pay for rent and so you think that's horrible but maybe daughter is 11 or 12 and she's already been having sex Mm -hmm. and so she's just now going to get paid for it and can help mom pay the rent so it's Mm -hmm. very it's never really um uh, really postured in a way of like i know honey this is a horrible thing i know you don't want to it's already an active lifestyle yep that, I mean, same thing for the girls that maybe are not sexually active. They mm-hmm. maybe go to a strip club first. Sure. And they're introduced to and kind of, um, you know, we no- begin to normalize mm-hmm. um, clothing and lack of clothing and behaviors. Yeah, and makes I mean, so much sense. Yeah. It's just like we're seeing it's all not over TV. It's thrown into a k- crate. Right. No. And, and be like, do this. Yeah. It's and, and, it, slow, and it does. It's a slow process, mm-hmm. a slow spiral into... Eventually, what is is trafficking when you what what would the definition be as forced for, fraud or coercion? Forced fraud mm-hmm. or coercion? Mm-hmm. Okay, so for, and okay. for something of value, for, okay, food, shelter, clothing, money. Yep, and it's and especially if you're under the age of eighteen, mm-hmm. um, it's a hundred percent defined. Anytime you were over the age of 18, it's harder to... Because it could be looked at as prostitution yep. or something like that. Okay. Yep. Even though most likely they were were trafficked earlier Yeah, on. and are still being trafficked. I mean, if, you, if you're yeah. out there on the streets and you got a pimp... You're trafficked. You're, you, and you're giving your money to, to him yeah. to whatever protect you. To just, just because by nature prostitution is illegal, mm-hmm. that also is why human trafficking is a part of that component yeah. to say, well, I mean, because society, right, yep. can look at it and say, well, I mean, you're out making money. He's taking your money, but yet he also says when she can eat. And she, mm-hmm. he also gives a quota. Mm-hmm. Um, so those, there's those out on the streets like that. Mm-hmm. There are girls behind the screens, guys behind the screen. We have now know that almost, some, some will say up to, as close to 40% that are being trafficked are also boys. Mm-hmm. So they they just yeah. present differently. Yeah. They can present as um, homosexual when they're not. So mm-hmm. there is a little bit of a stigma. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't normally they don't normally have live in a stable, which is 
a trafficker with several girls is considered, it's called a stable, stable okay. as if they're horses, horses, you yeah. know, some sort of livestock. Do girls normally live with their trafficker? Um, or do sometimes they just come and go from home as well while yeah, they do that? Okay. They can be okay. trafficked right as they're going to school yep. with okay. your, our kids, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. so it, it, familial trafficking is very, uh, mm -hmm. prevalent, um, being mm -hmm. where mom and dad are trafficking their mm -hmm. child, um, that average age is around nine. Mm -hmm. So, and it's such, it's still such a hidden crime that there's so many layers to it. And the oh. complexity of the issue is so hard to pinpoint, yeah. you know, domestic violence, uh -huh. right? Like you see your girlfriend one day and you see her next with a, with a black eye and you see her a couple months later with a black eye. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you're kind of going, huh? Mm -hmm. But with this, it's just this, this interesting oh, change in behavior. Uh, we never really think to ask, why did Susie sleep with the whole football team? Mm -hmm. Our parents told us, hey, you don't date Susie or mm -hmm. you don't hang out with Susie. Mm -hmm. But no one cared to say, why? how did Susie learn to do that? Oh. When did, yeah. you know, you, but you yeah. got to, and it's kind of a, my, as my husband calls it, the underbelly of society. Yeah. That people just don't okay. want to talk about mm -hmm. or look at mm -hmm. um and especially taking it very personal if your spouse is struggling with porn yeah or you've been to a strip club or yeah. you were sexually abused as a child mm -hmm. or you were very promiscuous when you were younger mm -hmm. and so now it goes from like talking about them mm -hmm. to now talking about us mm. and That's everybody hard. is so people. Yeah. Uh, disgusted by the supply yeah you're kind of going, hello, there is a demand There's issue. A demand. So yeah. we got to all kind of look at ourselves in the mirror and go, mm -hmm. what are we going to do about this demand issue? Oh, man. You know, we are we are the reason why pimps have a job. Yeah. Man, that's so crazy. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to imagine it happening mm -hmm. out so close. Mm -hmm. This isn't over in China or this isn't over in, like, this is at home. Yeah. Like happening to kids like that we could know. Yeah. Or and that, I mean, and there are, we've had interestingly enough, because we've taken on that mental health component, mm -hmm. we have had young ladies that have been sent to us that have the worst of trauma. They have been put in cages, mm -hmm. but they live in the U.S. and they've always lived in the U.S., born and raised. How does that, I know you can't give like detailed information, but how, like what, what would that, what, what, what does that look like? Like. <clears throat> So that is, this is um, just so shocking. That's typically a s type of satanic ritual abuse. Okay. Or yeah. some people are dropping the satanic part and just saying ritual mm -hmm. ritualistic abuse because of the type of abuse. It's mm -hmm. not always f for the purpose of Satanism. Sure. Um, although we would say that it is. We, yeah. But right. <laughs> um, um, but it is pedophile rings that uh, yeah. very powerful people or very wealthy people can order yeah. a child. Which we know now from the news, this really does happen. It really does happen. And you can tell by her um, scars, mm -hmm. you know, actively self-harming. You can tell by um, dissociative identity disorder. To be able to get through that, you create multiple personalities. Sure. Or multiple personalities are created mm -hmm. at a very young age to help you adapt as you get older yeah. to be able to perform mm -hmm. in a way that the buyer wants Demands. you to perform whether yeah. you are you want you to act like you're two mm -hmm. or um uh most of those kids you pay extra to mm -hmm. torture them mm. um burn them yeah. cut them kill them Ugh. it's a very very that part of it is I think the most um the one that people can't tolerate, mm -hmm. you know, in their yeah. like stomach imagining that that is mm -hmm. um but it's so very, very much mm -hmm. a part of it. So that part is and so saying that most facilities, if you call them up and say, Hey, I have someone who has um a history of satanic ritual abuse mm -hmm. and she has associative identity disorder they will say we thank you so much for calling us we hope you can get her or him some help mm -hmm. but we're not we're not qualified staffed we don't have the budget 
to even take mm-hmm. on that level of trauma. And so this population um, continues. Has, doesn't have help. Nothing. You don't have help. No. I knew a girl when I was way back in YWAM and she was in one of our schools and she had come out of a uh, ritual abuse mm-hmm. childhood. Mm-hmm. Very, very bad stuff. Yep. And, oh my gosh. I mean, blood sacrifices. Yeah, all of it. Um, I don't think people kill can each believe other. it, but it, it is. Mm-hmm. Like it is. Mm-hmm. For me to have even met one says that there, I mean, that would be rare. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just, yeah. my goodness. What's your um passion point? Is it, well, I can't ask you that because you're always going to be going to something else too. But <laughs> right now it's underage girls, right? Underage women? No. Or girls? Um, because we don't have a license yet. Okay. We are serving 18 to 24. Gotcha. Okay. Because that, any, anytime you serve anybody over the age of 18, um, believe it or not, you don't have to have specific regs and licensing. Although we've modeled our program oh. like the minors would be, uh, like what we'll do for the minors. Sure. When we when, do have a license. Have it, mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it hard to get a license? Uh huh. Okay. And expensive. Yeah. So kind of like um, building your school for children. Yep. Mm-hmm. Where, where's the bathroom? Oh. Um, oh, in the, proximity to oh, the, the classroom. Yes. Oh, so yeah. imagine this is, so this is also people living there. So then they tell everybody everything from staffing and requirements and sure. some of the requirements they're wanting you to work with human trafficking children or human children that have been trafficked uh, in a residential facility mm-hmm. for two years. Yeah. This is so new. Right. Like who am I going to find? Literally you're on like the cutting edge <laughs> of it. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Not you don't even have somebody to look at in our area. Yeah, that's no. doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're building home tidy homes. Well, I say that. So we we started okay. and we said oh, we're going to build these homes, uh-huh. and then we realized how expensive that was. Uh-huh. And then somebody brought the idea of tiny homes. I said, oh, we'll do that. Mm-hmm. It's le- at least. It's less expensive, yep. and then now in COVID, and yeah. you just kind of shift and and yep. and uh, <laughs> now go okay. Uh, for serving eighteen year olds, we don't have to have specific regs. Well, you know, right, we can just lease yeah. a house, and so that's what we've done, and we're doing now. That's amazing. And then I didn't we, know that. Mm-hmm. Oh. And so we have a um, thirty acres uh-huh. that we are now looking at to develop, and because of what we've learned over the last nine nine months mm-hmm. of having our doors open, that. If we do have those mm-hmm. more um, severely uh, traumatized mm-hmm. individuals that are coming into our program, that tiny homes, in other words, having something where they're not um, with staff, yeah, that might not be a good idea. That, uh-huh. you know, especially if yeah. she's coming in in a state of crisis. Yeah. And then we've got three others in the home, in a tiny home, because mm-hmm. there's 14 by 40 in this tiny home that are have progressed through the program and they're doing mm-hmm. well and have mm-hmm. no idea what satanic ritual abuse is. Right, right, And you bring right. current and you're like, oh, yeah. it's very disruptive. Because you don't want people to be re-traumatized right. by someone's story coming in yep. once they've tried to work. Oh, yeah, that uh-huh. makes sense. Yeah, so there may be some tiny homes on the property as they uh-huh. gain autonomy. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> for now, I mean, it actually may be some sort of circular facility yes. that where we have wings off oh. of it, but it's still on this beautiful piece of property, right. ropes courses, and oh. still feel like camp, totally. but not cabins. Right. Where you or have, like a rehab mm-hmm. or like a mental uh-huh. hospital. Like it's yeah. going to, it's going to be a beautiful yeah. light. Yeah. Anything you guys do is going to be so gorgeous too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, I'm like, okay, plan number three. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you have this plan and then you you open your doors and you go, oh, and then COVID. And so you look at this plan and you rip it up and you toss, you know, you throw Mm -hmm. it in there and go, okay, now what? Oh, man. Where do you get your girls? Or where where, where will they come from? Law enforcement. If you can say that. Okay. Oh, yeah. So So you have a relationship with Dallas PD or uh, all of them? Sheriff's Department. Okay. Because in those four years, I joined coalitions. Sure. So they're, so I get, we'll, for minors, we get them from CPS. So we have to have a contract with CPS. Wow. From parents. Oh, really? We've gotten self, and we have a few self referrals uh-huh. um, that they have al- they've already been in programs yeah. before, so I know how this works. Yep. Um, other organizations that were created to simply be the advocates, mm-hmm. so they would make a referral. I'm mm-hmm. um, a homeless shelter that has, mm-hmm. you know, this identified. Hey, this our homeless shelter is only able to have, 
like this amount of resources and they can only say this length of time yep. they she needs more care and we've we've identified her as being trafficked although sh- most of our residents have never identified themselves as being trafficked sure yeah because so. because the normalization yeah of it in there um and yours is long term right mm-hmm. which is got to be rare Mm-hmm. I would think for the mm-hmm. area, because there's I, there has to be a lot of like different programs where, you know, get them off the streets yeah. or give them a place to call or mm-hmm. run to or, but a long-term care, is anybody doing that that you know? No. Yeah. No, just that 18 to 36 mm-hmm. months because we see the recidivism rates uh-huh. are about, depending on who you talk to, 80, 90%. Okay. Um, until you get to that 12 month mark. Mm-hmm. So that's why we said, okay, it's a minimum of 18 months to yeah. really begin to, you, I mean, it is rewiring, reparenting, oh. uh, everything. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're just, when they come to us, half the time is just trying to get them to sleep through the night and eat regular meals and bathe yeah. regularly is not because they were, um, they like being dirty Mm-mm. or they like being sleep. I mean, it's not, not but it's, it's that I think we can all relate with. When we're sad mm-hmm. or we're depressed, something's gone on in our life, what's the first thing that goes? Usually you stay in bed, you sleep all day, right. yes. and you don't take a shower. And you don't shower. That's right. Don't eat. Yep. Or, I mean, and that, so with them, com- compound yeah. that over years and years of that, they just are not yeah. on the, a regular. They're survival. Mm-hmm. They are, yep. they have survived. Yeah. Man. Um, do you have a really happy success story? <laughs> <laughs> nine months in um <laughs> you know we had a hard that hard story that i'd shared with you mm-hmm. but um what's great about her mm-hmm. is that she is she's also um she went back to her trafficker mm-hmm. within just a few days mm-hmm. of being of, with you you know of, of leaving our care mm-hmm. um because she had had a baby. Mm. She needed to move Does she have the baby with her, with you? Did she bring the baby with her? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. She she brought the baby with her, mm. and that was the father. Mm-hmm. Um, so she believes. Mm-hmm. And um, I think there was just that maternal instinct of trying to introduce. I don't know. It, it, mm-hmm. was, it was an interesting dynamic. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, usually they go back and... They, they don't return. Mm-hmm. And she recognized within a few days, wow, that was that was very dangerous. That probably wasn't um, the wisest choice. And just to goes to, again, to our time of explaining, this is why you have to be in the program mm-hmm. a minimum of 18 months. Yeah. That and oh, So you'll make that a requirement. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. Yeah. Um, well, and I should say it's not a requirement. It's a request. Yeah. They are there voluntarily. That's neat. But we share with them, hey, our program's 18 yeah. months long. You know? Yeah. And if you can commit to this, we are committed to really helping yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. So she went back and then she, what, called you? Yeah. What'd she say? Um, she said, I'm, I'm, I made a mistake mm-hmm. and um, wanted to we were her only community mm. and we still remain her only community where she didn't realize that like, wow, I don't have any healthy relationships. I don't. Um, one of the things that we notice in our program is that here we are talking about healthy relationships and, and uh, uh, safe people. It's one of the books that we have the mm-hmm. girls read because they kind of it's, lost it's their sense. Cloud. Of, mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, and just really lost their sense of who safe people are. Yes. But also, I think for all of us, sometimes we thought this person was safe and found out that they're not. They weren't. Yeah. Um, so she, you know, she realized, oh, man, this is lonely. Mm-hmm. Um, and so thankfully, she had called. She was honest. Mm-hmm. Um, it was hard. I think it was hard for all of us. Just mm-hmm. we got so close. You know, with the baby, and um, yeah. she was our very first survivor. You know, so she just has always had a special place in yeah. her heart. And um, but then, so thankful that she felt safe enough to call us. Yeah. Because um, so oftentimes uh, they shame spiral. Sure. So people think there's the idea of oh, well, they're going to come into your home, Alicia, and you're going to get them a job. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, well, 
getting people a job um, without handling all the things that are going on in their body mm. uh, and their head and their yep. spirit and you know um, is it's it, it yeah. just doesn't it's not sustainable no um, it's kind of like when we give homeless people a home mm-hmm. without the tools that go with that yeah. I mean yeah. you, you go wow why are you homeless yep. like yeah, you're right back on the street. Yeah, it's the whole give a person a fish or teach them how to right. give them the tools to live well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, she's back. She's not in the program, uh-huh. but she's back in community. In community, yeah. um, reaching oh, out. We spoke yesterday. Wow. And, oh, <laughs> and but it is for her to know and. F- for each that come through our program mm-hmm. and we're not asking you to be perfect yes. just engage um lean in yep. this is not going to be easy um mm-hmm. to begin the healing process to kind of look at things yeah you know um for what they really are right and sometimes not even knowing that that what was happening to you uh, at a very young age was wrong yeah and that that's not quote unquote normal Mm -hmm. you know so many people that have been abused before the age of five um have this idea that everyone else is actively um giving oral sex Mm -hmm. you know and to and in reality they're riding their bikes sure yeah um so to retrain the brain like that has to be daunting yeah daunting Uh, and building trust you know yeah. I mean, how, why would they come and live with us? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and okay, hey, come live with us. We're going to help you. Mm-hmm. And here, welcome to your roommates. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, and there is like right. a sorority house with trauma. <sighs> um, yeah. yeah. It's, and in our day to day, I mean, they're working on getting their GEDs, high school diplomas, cool. or um, some are going to college. Uh, but getting a driver's license and birth certificates and measuring those activities of daily living, as we call them, which are which are eating regularly, right. and sleeping normal to us. Um, but yeah. But then they have that mental health component. So we have we're measuring um, their progress with our therapist yep. that's on staff and then our psychiatrist mm-hmm. um, that we partner with the med management. And um, if they're pregnant, yeah. we come alongside substance abuse support. It's a lot. It is. It is a lot, and it's as they begin healing. Sometimes mm-hmm. they begin to uncover other uh, trauma that they had suppressed. Mm-hmm. Oh, or, I'm sure. You know. Oh, I'm sure. And um, you know, an eating disorder that they forgot that they had. Mm-hmm. That now that they have, because they don't have, or they're active in, because they don't have the substance that they were used to mm-hmm. going to when they were needing to cope. Yeah. Um, you've been on the streets of Dallas, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, t- talking. Mm-hmm. With girls, yep. and I think you've talked to some pimps too, right? Yeah. Uh-uh. So yeah, it, we go with uh, we don't go as treasure vessels. Sure, you know yep. we go um, with another organization, mm-hmm. and that's what they do, and they're well known out on the streets. And is that because you want to just familiarize yourself, ha- like get to know them? But treasure vessels does a completely different function. Yes. Yes. Okay. Kind of just to understand their plight. Love it. Yep. What is it like to it's live? Like, uh, in danger yeah in survival mode mm-hmm. um what walking the track up and down which mm-hmm. is the street you know just walking the mm-hmm. track up, up for hours and you know what are their requests mm-hmm. what are their challenges when they try to get out of the life mm-hmm. um and ha- get a legitimate job mm-hmm. what are some of the challenges they yeah federal record do they oh, yeah um like remember when we went out there they would ask for socks yeah like, why do you want socks? I mean, you're, she's in high heels. Right, right. And, well, they're f- obviously, common sense, their feet hurt, yeah. you know? And, like, okay. But building relationships, yes, r- rapport, I should say, or mm-hmm. respect mm-hmm. with not only the girls that are active in the life, but also the pimps. Yeah. Because this is their livelihood, and this mm-hmm. is their territory, and we need to understand the game uh-huh. so we can be seen as an ally or yep. a resource to provide STD or STI testing, training, yes. uh, testing yes. and um, condoms, mm-hmm. which seems super like we, they don't, we don't have to pass out condoms. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, that is their life. That oh, is yeah. 
And if we can help them be safer. Yes. Um, it seems kind of against our Christianese mm-hmm. kind of way of, yeah, no. are you going out there? Are yeah. you praying with them? Yeah. Well, we do if they ask us to, but we right. leave our eyes open. Right. You know? It's the report. It's the long game. You're playing the it long is. game. It is. That's like your life now. Yeah. Ch- that's that's, <laughs> that's yeah. the long game. Um, didn't you have a funny story about giving a pimp a condom? Oh, yes. Well, gotta- <laughs> <laughs> I, I copied it from my mentor that's out on the street. Oh, that's she it. is yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Five foot, five two. I'm five four. I can't make, make it. But like a little Spitfire, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. and she just <laughs> makes sure that they're you know they're kind of smoozing, schmoozing, yeah. you know, and and trying to push the limits and the boundaries sure. to yeah. see what you'll say and how you'll yeah. respond. And so she's always just kind of known about having just this attitude, <laughs> uh, and so she'll. Hey, do you know? And the girls she will say, sure. Them, right? They all know each other. Like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> because we, when we go out, we do have a label on our car. So they oh, know who cool. we are. We have our hands raised. We open up the back of the yeah, trunk. Yeah, yeah. We're always in a well-lit area. Yep. Um, not for the faint of heart. Absolutely sure. at all. It is yep. not the most. My, my husband doesn't like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is really dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't wear jewelry. We don't, you mm-hmm. know, anything that would possibly set us up to be mm-hmm. um, a victim of crime. Yep. You know, that's just a headache for law enforcement. So we don't sure. need to draw any more attention yeah, to ourselves yeah. in, in that way. So, um, but she would you know, give condoms. Th- you know, you want some condoms? And of course, the girls are like, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and then, um, mm-hmm. but then you say to the pimp, you know, do you, here, you want some condoms? And he, oh, no, kind of like um, denying his role, mm-hmm. which is like, we, we know we what your know role is. We know what's going on here. Yeah, we know what's going on here. And so he would say, no, you know, do you want a condom? Mm-hmm. And she, he would say no. And she'd say, does the world need you to have condoms? <laughs> and then she would go, here's an extra small. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, this is my favorite. They have to love her. <laughs> yes, they do. Love her. they do. Of course, yeah. <laughs> they do, they do. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's they so think, like funny. tolerate us, the you know? The rapport is so huge because mm-hmm. even like when we've been at the Dream Center, you know, in mm-hmm. um, LA, I remember going into like Compton and just these neighborhoods that you hear about in like the news mm-hmm. or TV. And it's like, I, I don't know this for a fact, but it almost felt like we were protected mm-hmm. by the people in the neighborhoods yeah. because of the rapport of the LA Dream Center yep. and what they offer and how they don't push and how they don't judge. And they don't, you know, they, they give the food, they pray with people who want, and they have access to neighborhoods that I could never just drive into and hop out of my car and be like, who wants to talk? Right. right? That's yeah. not how it happens. No. It's not no. how it happens. And so that's like, I just love that so much. Um, do you love the girls down there? Yeah. And they're they're usually so happy to see us. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes depending on um, who their current pimp is mm-hmm. or whether sometimes they've they're met skittish, their quota. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Um, or if they're on drugs. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm just always, we're always on high alert, yeah. even though we go out all the time and we see them and we you feel like there is a bond there. Yeah. In reality, most likely there is not. Yeah, and the loyalty will be yes. to the, the system that yeah. Yeah. they know. Because there's the cartel yeah. is out there. We don't ever have, I mean, law enforcement, we'd come and mm-hmm. sp- um, provide some sort of support that wasn't helpful for what we no. were doing. Yeah. Um, so it's it, all over age um, girls on the, in those situations that, right. There's no, like, oh, the child thing is behind closed doors. Uh, no, oh, it's, it's not. No. Oh, okay. I mean, some of those are, are young. Okay. So, and we're obligated to report that if we right. see somebody Someone, that yeah. we believe that may be underage. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, there's the the massage parlors because usually mm-hmm. people uh, yeah. say, okay, who is a buyer? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, on average. Who is? Yeah. So out there on the streets, they're a John mm-hmm. uh, is what we call them. The uh, buyers. The buyers they're are called, called John. Johns. Yeah. Um, so typical John is 30 to 45-year-old white. Okay. Middle to upper middle class sure. male. Yeah. But you yeah. go into a massage parlor, you have the uh, pornography online or... No, that's everywhere. And um, that's all over the socioeconomic race. Sure. I mean, everything. Yeah. Um, so that that is such a... We have massage parlors right here, like right down the street. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That give, quote, you know, happy endings. Mm-hmm. And that um, 
are very easily have a storefront yeah. very easily accessed yeah so it's it kind of when we talk about the complexity i mean you've got the girls on the street yeah that's one kind right of trafficking that we see mm-hmm. and then we have the trafficking the exploitation that's just um exploitation online yeah um, the layers yeah all the layers and all the ads that are going out i mean we've seen such an increase of ads online ads during covid oh jeez there's a lot of um what is it is the word catfishing or um there's a lot of like men that pose as like teen boys right oh yeah on like snapchat or, or girls. tiktok or girls mm-hmm. and yep. that's usually for the express purpose right of yep. getting them in the system of yep. again not kidnapping nope getting them slowly bought groomed. into the yeah mm-hmm. groomed yeah yeah, because if we can get a, if we can get someone to go willingly, yep, it's so much easier to make them stay. Mm-hmm. Then you know, there's gorilla pimps out there. That's called a Romeo pimp, but the gorilla pimp is more of the, the is the is the physical violence, yeah. um, which yeah. isn't good for business. You know, mm-hmm. you're not a, a very attractive if you've got a bloody if nose you're all and beat up. Yeah, right. So it's um, there's very strategic. People talk about mm-hmm. the. The Super Bowl mm. being one of the largest, and it's not true. Yes, it is really one 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 type. But this any is really place yeah. where large groups of men gather, a, an IT conference, uh, anything. Um, traffickers yeah. are studying that. They know that this conference, this convention happens this year, and I know that I can send girls there. So it's do the girls approach people or or is. It, Oh yeah. Waste. Okay. So the girls will just go up and be like, "Hey, are you looking?" Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they're taught how to do that. Yeah. So it's not like, it's not like they go and these. I just can't. I'm just trying to picture like a couple IT guys hitting Harry Hines up. I'm like, they're gonna get murdered. Oh right. <laughs> like, yeah. There's, I just don't <laughs> think they could do. I don't think they have a stomach for it. Now you do. I don't yeah. think they would. No offense, IT people. I love you. Um, yeah. <laughs> But so well, I mean, you'll so see they, BMWs they get pull pre- up. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. People, men on their way to. We've done outreach between the hours of six a.m. and eight a.m. Really, mm-hmm. on the way to work. On the way to work, just, man. Yep. I wouldn't believe it if I didn't know it. I believe it. I just yeah. I know it's true. I yeah. know it. It's just so still so shocking though. However many times I hear it from mm-hmm. you or read different things, I'm just like, ah, this is just. Yeah. And it's the topic that you know, sex is such a yeah. Uh, it's always been kind of, it, and I think the, the way that the Lord designed it is to be private and mm-hmm. to be intimate and mm-hmm. to really have a place and a purpose. Mm-hmm. And so I think that the enemy just really taking that and highlighting it and just making sure that, hey, if you're doing this uh, in a way that's not, that God didn't design, mm-hmm. then you're going to feel this feeling of shame and guilt. And we can't come alongside People, if we don't know that this is an issue, if if pedophilia yeah. is um, continues to remain in the shadows, yeah, uh, and so we're just continuing to pe- perpetuate this cycle of there being a supply because there is a demand that mm-hmm. we're unwilling, unwilling to take to responsibility face. for. So, what can people do? Just the the normal person that goes that works nor- normal hours or mom that just yeah. is like. Oh, like you, when you heard about it, like, oh my gosh, like right. this is big. It's happening right here in our area. What can people do? So there's a video out um, that General Ken Paxton, he put a video mm-hmm. out a couple of years ago that said, be the one. Mm-hmm. And it's an hour long video, but it's uh, five different stories of how somebody said something in a neighborhood, uh-huh. she noticed a girl walking out to the trash can oh, no um, multiple times. She just looked at a place. And finally, the neighbor said, hey, do you are you in trouble? Or do you need? Mm. And the girl responded with yes. And so it's that that idea of just uh, be the one to say something yeah, to. And observe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're, what you're, are signs of a child so being trafficked? If you have a daughter. Uh-huh. And her friend comes over Mm -hmm. and you know what kind of lifestyle they have always lived. Mm -hmm. And then the daughter comes over and she is now has a designer handbag. Mm. Where'd you get that designer handbag? She's starting to dress differently. Mm. Um, Your daughter or starting to um, 
look at older men or start mm-hmm. to have an older boyfriend. Um, things that are just not in line with what the you age. typically see, right? Okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. bruises on the arms mm-hmm. where yep. we've got some aggression. Um Putting devices, putting things on your kids' device. I mean, I just did Bark. I just put the Bark app on their phone. On your kids? And on on their computers. And just to not, I mean, and it's funny because if you actually look at the reviews, they have really bad reviews. They're kids. (gasps) (laughs) (laughs) The kids are like, this is the worst app ever. This is ruining my (laughs) life. Exactly. Great. I mean, and I because my daughter goes, oh, Look, I've got to get that. This has got some really bad I'm, reviews. And that. so she oh, and I both so are reading so them, funny. going, Oh my gosh. <laughs> so and having that very oh. frank conversation with yeah. there is no such thing as a helicopter parent, mm-hmm. I don't believe. In today's yeah. day and age, you put that device, either a laptop 100%. or a phone, in their hand, you yep. have opened up the world, the world to them. Yeah. Oh, um, you're so right. I could not agree more. Yeah. So, yeah. but that is, a, Tate, that is the age that we're living it in. It also is a part of the life that they're going right. to I be Right. I know PD's in. talked yeah. about that. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. Um, the bruises, I, though, you were saying, anything that doesn't seem age. Yeah. It, that, that clothing, mm-hmm. um, d- unique, different kind of friends, which we kind of mm-hmm. know what to look for, right? When we're thinking about, yeah. oh gosh, she's hanging out with the wrong crowd. Right, right. But find out what that wrong crowd actually mm-hmm. is. Is it somebody, you know, dressing in gothic and you don't like that? Mm-hmm. Or right, is there right, really right. something going deeper that's going on to where, because girls can be recruiters mm-hmm. uh, and and uh, and boys, boys yeah. can be recruiters. And that looks like this, this kid in high school meets mm-hmm. this guy, good looking guy, and he says, Hey, I'm having a party next Friday. Um, I'll give you 50 bucks if you bring 10 girls or five girls or two. Wow. Okay. So, sure mm-hmm. enough, this unsuspecting high school kid that needs 50 bucks, you know, brings a couple of girls, and now maybe things are put in their drinks, mm-hmm. maybe photos are taken, yep. whatever it is that they can use kind of to exploit them. Yeah. And to shame them, and you'll get kicked off the cheerleading squad if your coach oh, sees this man. or whatever it is, and not understanding that, especially if those photos are in the hands of someone 18 and older, yeah. that is now a felony. Right. That is child pornography. Yes. Yep. So empowering yes. the young people to know you have rights. You do yep. not have to stay in this cycle. Yep. Um, but also making sure that parents and aunts and uncles and friends, you know, because yeah. a lot of times kids will share things with their friends. Totally. Yep. And to, I mean, to, and I know one of our survivors, she said to say something. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember, I can't think of her quote, but she was the basic thing is if you say something and you're wrong, then you were wrong. You but were if wrong. you don't say something and you were oh, right, yeah. you could have saved a life. Yeah. So, so true. I, it's, and it's getting on, you know, getting on their phones. Mm-hmm. Who are they talking to? Not gaming. Mm-hmm. I mean, especially these young kids that are gaming, mm-hmm. have headphones on. Who talking are they talking to? to? Men. Yeah. You know, what are they talking about? Okay, if you allow that, then just take away their headphones yeah. and just say, hey, yep. I just want to be able to hear when I walk by the room that somebody is not being mean to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and positioning it in a sense that it's not that I don't trust you. Now, yeah. however, we I don't know anywhere in the Bible where it says we're supposed to trust our children. <laughs> I mean, it was just, right, right. It's just some of the thought processes <laughs> yeah. that it's just ridiculous. Right. You know, 11, 12, 13. We know the average age of a kid that's introduced to trafficking yeah. is 12 to 14 years old. So if we know that and they say the, the most vulnerable. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, but I feel like I was pretty vulnerable at that age mm-hmm. trying oh. to discover who oh, I was, what it. kind of clothes. And you, I, am I popular? Do they like me? All the we things. Want, I mean, would do anything for, you exactly. know. Exactly. And then we put a device in their hands and say, hey, anybody can say anything to my child. Yeah. And I hope that the kid is going to make the right choice. Yeah, no. And we see uh, time and time again how— Jude has an iPad game, and um, he was— watch- And they don't, they're not allowed to watch ads. And mm-hmm. they're all children's games, so uh-huh. it's not like they're adult ads, but I still don't like ads. Right. And so, it, like, they'll always just put it on their chest when there's an ad. <laughs> so he'll walk by, and Genesis will just be sitting there with, like, his iPad on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> and they know the exact count time mm-hmm. when it's over. Mm-hmm. And so they pulled up. Well, I walked in the other day and Jude had the iPad to his chest and I just wanted to see what ad it was. It was mm-hmm. for some stupid kids game like Mario Run. Mm-hmm. That could be wrong. Don't sue me, Mario Run. No, like, <laughs> I don't. But they had a Game of Thrones ad. 
I'm wow. like, that is an adult HBO show. Right. And this is on a Mario run. Right. Again, that could be wrong. Right. But that's, the, I was just like, okay, delete, whatever it was. It's mm-hmm. off. Like there's, I mean, it's just, but this is a good reminder to me. And I think all parents just, that we can't be too vigilant. We cannot be too vigilant in no. this area. Um, one of my friends, she lived in California and she's really passionate about this stuff. And she was walking her dog one day down the road and she walked by a massage parlor. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember what it was that she saw, but something wasn't right. I think she might've saw like a woman getting hit or there was something that she saw like mm-hmm. behind the, and it was closed. But because she's super vigilant, she's always like peering in massage parlors. <laughs> <laughs> Which I could totally see you doing. Yes. Well. What are you doing in there? <laughs> what you doing, huh? <laughs> Alicia here, open yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> um, but she uh, reported it and they got shut down. They were a ring. Wow. And they got like, she, she I'm like, wow, yeah. go girl. Yeah. Like just one report. Yep. And I mean, who, I'm sure they just popped up somewhere else, but yeah. it was like me. And it's like, that's, but we have to do that as, as people who care about this. Like we got to look, we got to be aware. Yeah. And you have a book. I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's funny when you, when you start something or it, somebody says, oh, hey, uh, you're going to write a book and you mm-hmm. go, wow. Is that like the next step? Right, right, right. Is, is there a, bo- a manual for what I'm How supposed to do next? There's not. You were writing the manual. <laughs> yes. And even somebody the other day, I mean, I had said, hey, uh, when are you going into politics? I'm like, again, a book, politics, <laughs> I'm just starting a nonprofit. I like, I, I don't, I didn't know that that was the progression. Um, I did. I, I really wanted um, to, as a layman, not knowing yes. what I didn't, not knowing what I didn't know, uh, just to write down my thoughts on how this even got started, how yeah. to just to encourage people in the, the process, mm-hmm. um, which I'm still in the process. I could yeah. probably write a secondary book of, yeah. hey, remember that when I was starting? Yeah, that was phase one. Uh-huh. <laughs> now this is, let me tell you about mm-hmm. how hard yeah. this journey is and how like uh, anybody that's in our home has to go to regularly go to therapy because mm-hmm. um, there is that tertiary secondary trauma that yeah. um, yeah. there is the, what if somebody goes, somebody leaves the program and goes back to the life? How do you respond? Yeah. Um, how do you think that you're going to respond and then mm-hmm. really learn, wow, that hit you harder than you thought that it would. Yeah. Um, how do you remember that you're not their savior? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and just, I don't know. It was just a kind of a step by step. Mm-hmm. Um, it was co- it's called tenacious, tenacious because my father in law years ago when we uh, when I started dating my husband mm-hmm. he uh, he called me tenacious. He was like, "You have mm-hmm. such so much tenacity," <laughs> and I've been called a lot of things. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, "Is that was that coming? Is that good or is that like <laughs> <laughs> um, relentless? You don't ever give up?" I'm like, I don't know. "Is that like am I running a race yeah. or are you saying, oh my gosh, Alicia, you are.'" The, the the annoying salesperson, <laughs> you know, I just, and so that, that idea of just mm-hmm. sticking it out and staying and, and not giving up and then also <sighs> encouraging okay. those that start something, but in encouraging the ones that say, I'm the one that comes alongside. Right. I'm the two on the Enneagram. Right. I, you know, and You've I'm going, well, I'm the three. that are that yes. person for you. Yes. yes. And, and being good with knowing your role to come alongside. Yeah. And that those of us that have taken the step to start something that is also starting something yeah. when you come alongside yes. and bring your gifts and your talents and so good um so when we do work that just stares into the face of darkness yeah it, the only option is to outlast i mean we just yeah. we outlast we don't yep. give up yep. we don't quit we're tenacious yeah and so many do oh yeah. um yeah. For their own safety, their mental sure. health, their... Mm-hmm. Uh, I can see why. Oh, I and I see. absolutely can see yeah. why if there's no... If our, if our focus is, is if we if we get lost, and I, and I know what that feels like to get... To lose my focus and feel mm-hmm. so alone, yeah. um, even though, the, you know, the Bible says that the Lord is with us, yeah. you, you don't feel like it. No. Um, yeah. But you're intentionally... Um, I was found myself intentionally disconnected mm-hmm. and going through the motions and just doing the work. Yeah, I've been there. Yep. And then you go, okay, wait. And you you you're more sensitive. You mm-hmm. fall apart more than, mm-hmm. you know, things just start to fall through the cracks. Mm-hmm. And then when that connection, right, reconnection yeah. happens, 
there's there's a sense of purpose yeah. and um, uh, more grace, yeah. more um, acceptance mm-hmm. when things don't go well. Yeah, knowing that wait, wait, wait yeah. this wasn't my vi- mission and vision. This yeah. was his. Yeah, and um, but it's that ebb and flow mm-hmm. of remembering to lean in instead of so good. <laughs> you know, pulling away. Yeah. Uh, or even it's not even intentionally pulling away. Sometimes it's just uh, it gets it gets drowned out. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, that that most important thing that we have to take time for. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We're not of those who shrink back. Yeah. <laughs> Although sometimes we want to. <laughs> yes. As anybody doing anything really meaningful. Yeah. I'm like, can I just sit we'll in the corner feel. and rock back and forth? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. That's just how I feel sometimes, you know? <laughs> totally. Oh, man. I've had, <laughs> I've thought multiple times, I never have my wisdom teeth out. I could get my wisdom teeth out in a two days and <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd be right back to the work. I would yeah. just two days of wisdom to you. Yeah. Ain't nobody got time for that. But I'd be the person who like <laughs> didn't have any pain. It was required to like just go straight back to life. <laughs> like pay no attention to the bloody you know, <laughs> tissue in my mouth. But I think it's real because I think people can look at you and look at anybody that are just, um, you know, doing big things. And I think it's good to be real about Mm. what we face yeah you know i think it's great that you can say you're in therapy i say it all the time yeah. i think it's great that we can be like yeah we mm-hmm. want to rock back and forth sometimes. yeah you want to be like you want to stare at a blank wall because yep. it's hard the work is hard yeah and that's when it comes back to at the end of the day are we called that's right are we called and we are <laughs> yeah yeah and i and just to even to be that the god of the universe would ask us to come to partner with with yeah. with him and and yeah. to and then he's faithful to to bring a village yes. and to use have to use wisdom and discernment mm-hmm. on who is right for the village um, and pray mm-hmm. that they're using that as well mm-hmm. and uh, and wolf in sheep's clothing yeah but man they look good on paper <laughs> you know and go, yeah. golly yeah yeah <laughs> and how do you turn away somebody that mm-hmm. really wants to help but because of the type of work you're doing, mm-hmm. they have their own trauma that they've yet to it deal with. Be, yeah, and it just There's is so, a, so hard for leaders to make decisions. Business owners, I mean, all it, all it is any leadership. Yeah, it it's it's because uh, yeah. there's just so many layers to it, especially when there's the ministry aspect of things. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and you're in a field where, like we've said, it's just there's you could pick one of those layers. You could pick the massage parlor layer. You could pick the street layer. You could pick the yeah. online layer. I mean, there's just so mm-hmm. many of them. I could, I can just imagine how overwhelming it could feel at times. Yeah. And so it's just day by day, step well, by step. Follow it, the follow the call. Follow the vision. COVID hits. You, yeah. You, you, you oh, pivot. Pivot. You pivot. You pivot. <laughs> 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 like Ross and friends, uh, pivot. Yeah, pivot, pivot. <laughs> I think you, you're doing is a little bigger than that couch. <laughs> it's a great illustration. Oh my goodness. Okay, treasuredvesselfoundation.org. Yep. Tenacious by Alicia yes. Bush. It's on Amazon. Amazon. And um, if you do, you, I'm sure you have a mailing list. Yes. If people want to get on it and yes. just hear more, do more. Mm-hmm. Um, some people have a lot of time. They'd probably love to volunteer or yep. go with you on a, you know, a uh, street walk <laughs> what would you call it walking the- out street outreach uh, street. Or, or we want to no, no. walk the track track the- if they want to walk the track <laughs> we yeah some people might want to donate to you know a survivor or whatever mm-hmm. it is yep. so please y'all check it out and um thank you I'm so yeah. proud of you thank and you. i really like i i have a i don't do what you do but i have a glimpse of the difficulty yeah in like i said working against darkness and yeah. You're amazing. Your family's amazing. Likewise. Glad we're in this together. Same. Treasuredvesselsfoundation.org. You're amazing. Love you. Thank you. Love you too. Thank you.